And now, please welcome our graduates.
please welcome the members of the University at Albany faculty. Please, Please rise, rise for the commencement platform party, party led, led by, by members of the Adirondack Adirondack Pipe and Drums. Professor Mary McCarthy and Professor Cynthia Fox. The University at Albany Deans. The senior leadership of the University at Albany. 2018 Torch Professor Victor Assal. Rabbi Nomi Manon, Executive Director of U Albany's Hillel. Brian Fessler, class of 26 and 27, president of the U Albany Alumni Association. Representing the graduating class, Medea Khan. Members of the University Council, Chairman Michael Castellana, class of 1984 and 1992. Mark Egan, James Jackson, Abner Jean-Pierre, class of 1993. Faculty Representative James Maurer, and Graduate Student Representative Tom Robertson. The immediate past chair of the Faculty Senate, James Collins. Graduate Student Association President Dylan Carr, Class of 2015. Student Association President Jerlissa Fontaine. Trustee of the State University of New York, Mark Cohen, Class of 2016 and 2018. Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, James Stella. Today's commencement speaker, President and CEO of Virgin Orbit, Dan Hart, Class of 1983. 
and the 20th President of the University at Albany, Dr. Avidan Rodriguez. President Rodriguez, I declare that the 174 commencement of the University at Albany, State University of New York, is now in session. Please remain standing or rise for the presentation of the colors with the ceremonial flags being carried by the ROTC Mohawk Battalion Color Guard and the singing of the national anthem, which will be led by graduating senior Ugochi Enuraka. Amen. <laughs> 
Please remain standing for the invocation, which will be offered by Rabbi Nomi Manan, Executive Director of UAlbany's Hillelo. Source of wisdom, this is the day that you have made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We are here today to celebrate and give you thanks for this ending, which is truly a beginning. Each of us has followed a different path to get here, but no one has done it alone. We remember with gratitude each parent, grandparent, spouse, child, and friend who supported a student on this journey. We honor with appreciation each faculty, staff, and administrator who opened the minds and warmed the hearts of countless students on this campus. Today we celebrate in a community where many are receiving academic degrees. Let us not forget, however, that only a tiny fraction of the inhabitants of this crowded global community hold such degrees. Therefore, we pray that we will use these degrees, the doors they open and the knowledge they represent for the good of all humanity. With abundant joy and anticipation, we ask for your warmest blessing on all of those who have brought us to this moment. When uncertain, may you bring us clarity. When doubtful, may you bring us hope. And when inspired, may you help us to change the world. Amen. Please be seated. I now have the great pleasure of introducing you to the 20th president of the University at Albany, Dr. Avidan Rodriguez. Good morning. Muy buenos dias. It is a great day. Senator Schumer, Trustee Cohen, members of the University Council, honored guests, faculty, staff, alumni, family, and friends, and last but not least, our degree candidates, it is my honor to welcome you to the University at Albany's 2018 <laughs> undergraduate <laughs> commencement. As you may have noticed, we have a very special guest with us on stage this morning. It is my great honor to welcome New York Senior's United States Senator, Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer. Senator Schumer brings an unmatched energy, passion, and commitment, not only to higher education, but to the people of our state and nation. He has been a tireless champion for the University at Albany, and we cannot thank him enough for his commitment to public higher education. Knowing that he has an extraordinarily busy schedule, we are honored that he is here today. It is my privilege to introduce, and let's give a great day welcome to Senator Chuck Schumer. Thank you. Let's also give a round of applause for something else that just made its appearance. The sun. Well, it's great to be here, and first, let me congratulate this great class, you Albany 2018. You are the greatest. Now, first, I'd like to announce my class gift. As you know, it's hard to pay for college and graduate school. If you're poor, the federal government helps you out, but what about the middle class? 
So a few years ago, I wrote a law that said you or your parents, whoever paid for college and graduate school, can take as a full tax credit $2,500 off your federal taxes for every year of college and graduate school provided. In Washington, there's always a provided. Provided your family income is below $200,000 a year. So, if you come from a family that makes below $200,000, make sure you or mom or dad, whoever paid, takes that credit. It's new. So last year, about a quarter of all the people who were entitled didn't take it. And if you forgot, you can file a form and get up to three years back on this and get a check for $7,500. Not bad. Not bad. Now, what happens if you come from a family that makes above $200,000? God bless you. A word to the moms and dads, I know how you feel. A few short years ago, my wife Iris and I sat where you did and watched our daughter Jessica get her diploma. It was one of the greatest days of our lives. But if you're like us, you think back. It's not easy raising kids. We remembered, you think back to the tougher times. We remembered when Jessica was four months old, she had 106 and a half fever. We rushed her to the hospital, didn't think she'd make it. Praise God she did. We remembered when we put her on the kindergarten bus for the first time, and as the bus pulled away, she ran to the back of the bus waving goodbye, tears streaming down her little cheeks. But when Iris went to meet her on the bus's return at two o'clock, she bounded off the bus. Happy as could be. She said, Mommy, I came back. When we talked to her that night, we realized what was going on in her little head. She thought that was it. New parents, new family, new house, new neighborhood. Then we remembered Jesse as a teenager, where she didn't say much. And when she did, we didn't understand a word she said. And then moms, dads, you see your daughters and sons, Get that diploma and become an adult before your very eyes. A round of applause to the moms and dads. And two more words of thanks and congratulations. One, one of my people working in my office is graduating here today, Julia Alford. Congratulations to her. And one more word of thanks. As we're sitting here having a great day, there are young men and women, many your age, from across New York State who've enlisted in our armed forces. They're risking their lives in dangerous places like Iraq and Afghanistan for our freedom and way of life. Let's have a round of applause for them as well. Now, to this great, great class, you Albany 2018. You are graduating at a time of enormous change in the country and around the world. It's, it's an era of profound economic change, profound social change. The world is moving so very, very fast. In the old days, for instance, you graduated from college, and the odds were pretty high that you'd have the same job or work in the same field for 40 years. That's not true, that's not, that's not so true anymore. Most of you will have several jobs, many of you several careers. Along with the economic changes, the internet has put so much information at your fingertips, it's sometimes hard to figure out what's important and to distinguish between what's true and what isn't. And around the world as well, all kinds of changes, not all of them for the better. When I graduated, the words like mass shooting and terrorism were never even heard. But the good news is this, your generation is better equipped to adapt and take advantage of all these new changes than any generation before you. You've gotten a great education here. You know only one third of the young people your age will get a college degree. And here at UAlbany, your college degree is better than almost any other anyone could get. Second, you have families. They'll have your backs through thick and thin. And third, you're the first generation to grow up fully familiar with all this new technology. You know, your parents, your teachers, me, we try to get used to it, but we're learning about it. You, you were born into it. Technology is to your generation like water is to a fish. So, there are great changes going on around the world, but your generation, because of those advantages, 
is better equipped to adapt to these new changes than any generation before you, better equipped to overcome the obstacles they present and seize the opportunities they afford. And you're better equipped to pursue your passions, to dream big dreams, and maybe even do big things. But right now, sitting in your seats, you may not be sure what's going to come next. With the world changing so quickly, it sometimes feels like you're jumping into an abyss. But the key graduates is this. Don't fear the unknown. Don't fear change. Relish it. Embrace it. Soak it up. Don't let a setback stand in your way. Because if you embrace change and don't let setbacks deter you, the odds are very high, given all your advantages, you'll succeed. Now, how do I know I experienced some of these things myself? When I was seated at college graduation many decades ago, as you are today, I had just learned that I had won a scholarship to travel all around the world, all expenses paid for a whole year. For me, it was the opportunity of a lifetime. I was a kid from Brooklyn, never been out of the country before. Hi, Brooklyn. But at the same time I learned I won that scholarship, I had just fallen in love for the first time. Ah, So class of 2018, I had to decide. Do I go around the world on the all expense paid scholarship for a whole year? Or do I stay home with the girl, my first true love? Class of 2018, what would you have done? President, the class is divided. I stayed home with the girl. Don't clap, you romantics in the front row. The story unfolds. That summer, she went on a short vacation, and I went to the airport to meet her on her return. As soon as she got off the plane, I saw by the look on her face, something was the matter. She dumped me by Labor Day. There I was, no scholarship, no trip around the world, no girl. I said to myself, what a loser you are. Hang it up, it's over, you're never going to make anything of yourself. And in fact, I stayed in my house for several months, moped around, felt bad for myself, but somehow I picked myself up, dusted myself off, and a few years later, I felt I was seated at graduation again, this time from law school. But on the way home from law school, I told mom and dad I was not going to join the fancy law firm like we had planned. I told them I loved politics. I told them my dream was to run for office, even though the likelihood of succeeding was small. My parents were shocked. My mother was particularly disappointed. You see, I grew up in a working class family. My father was an exterminator, never went to college, never made much money. And the law firm was paying $400 a week, which in those days was more money than my family had ever seen. But my dream was to run for office. And so that fall, against very long odds, I ran for the New York State Assembly and I had three opponents. There was the party machine candidate. There was a neighborhood activist. And then, there was my mother, who was telling all her friends not to vote for me. So as she said, I'd get this dumb idea of being a politician out of my big, thick head. Well, graduates, a few years earlier, I sure didn't get that girl. But that November, I won the election. So, to this great class of 2018, on this day of your achievement, my advice is take the risk. Don't let the fear of failing deter you. You know, for those of us who've gotten older and look back on life, one of the most painful times is what I call the what-ifs. You say to yourself, what if I had only done this? What if I had only gone there? So my advice to the class of 2018 is simple. Go for it. You're about to cast off into the unknown, and it sometimes can be kind of scary. But you've got great assets, your education, your family, your familiarity with technology, and they will have everyone, th those will propel you. So garner up your strength, garner up your courage, put aside your doubts, take a chance, and if you do, 
It is not only my hope, it is not only my prayer, it is indeed my confidence that you, every one of you, will find true success and joy in life. To the great class of 2018, congratulations. Good luck. Godspeed, and don't forget, go for it. Keep staying out, Mr. Sun. Once again, thank you very much, Senator Schumer, for your support of the University at Albany, and thank you for being with us today. Once again, congratulations to all the graduates. Muy buenos dias. But before we celebrate your success, as is our tradition, let us take a moment of silence to remember our family members and friends, colleagues, and alumni who are no longer with us. A moment of silence, please. Thank you very much. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge all of the family members and friends who have stood by these students across their educational journeys. I also want to thank every member of our faculty, staff, and the extended U Albany family for your dedication to these fine graduates. Their success has only been possible with the support of our entire community. And among today's graduates are, are 32 military veterans. To all the veterans in the house, from one veteran to another, I say thank you for your service to our great country. I would also like to take a special moment to give a shout out and congratulate the University at Albany's men's lacrosse team who have made history by making it to the final four of the NCAA Division I Championship. Go Danes! Today marks the end of a very important chapter in your life story and the beginning of the next. Your education at UAlbany has created important opportunities for you both in and outside of the classroom. You have gained knowledge and developed skills in a broad range of disciplines and topics. You have broadened your horizons through education abroad and internships. You've participated in research projects with world-class faculty members. You've improved the quality of life on campus and in the community through volunteerism and other forms of service. With all that you have gained through the University at Albany experience, you have all the tools to write the next chapter of your story. No matter where the next chapter leads you, you have opportunities to think and dream and act across cultural and natural boundaries beyond the moment, even beyond the, what you once thought was possible. I can tell you from my personal experience, you will be amazed at what you will be able to achieve. My own journey to college was not an easy one, but it was the one path that would transform my life, that would allow me to make important contributions to my community, that would help support my family, and that would allow me to play an important role in transforming the lives of so many through the power of education. With the support from family, from teachers, friends, and mentors, not only did I make it to college, I went on to graduate school and a career in higher education that has led me to become the 20th president of an outstanding Research One institution, the University at Albany, your alma mater. Like me, all of you have amazing opportunities to build on your success and achieve great things. Today, looking out over this impressive crowd of graduates, I cannot help but feel truly inspired and optimistic about the future, about what you will achieve individually and collectively. One reason I feel so inspired is that you, Albany is truly an engine of opportunity, creating access and mobility for all communities, including first-generation college students. In fact, 31% of you 
will be the first in their families to earn a four-year degree. You may have noticed purple and gold number one stickers on some of our graduate caps and gowns. These are to identify our first generation graduates. Congratulations, felicidades to each and every one of you. And remember, whatever the future holds for each of you, let me tell you something I hope you will remember throughout your lives. Never ever be afraid to take a chance, to make those difficult decisions. If there's one thing I have learned, it is that taking risks is the surest way to succeed. Yes, risk can lead to failure, but that is okay because many times we learn more from our mistakes than we do from our success. Whatever setbacks you encounter, don't ever, ever give up. As the great Nelson Mandela once said, do not judge me by my successes, judge me by how many times I fell down and got back up again. If you get back up and keep your eyes on the prize and move forward, the future will be yours to seize. I know that I speak for on behalf of everyone on this stage and every member of the University at Albany family that when I say that it has been an honor, our honor, to be part of your journey. Again, congratulations to each and every one of you on this tremendous achievement. Thank you for all that you have done and for all that you will do in the future. Thank you for helping you Albany reach its vision, which is to be the nation's leading diverse public research university, providing the leaders knowledge and innovations to create a better world. We at U Albany know what you have to offer. And now it is time to unleash the greatness of the world because remember and never ever forget, you are, we are the Great Danes. And now I'd like to bring to the podium our Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Jim Steller, who will introduce the commencement speaker, Jim. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning. It's a pleasure to be with you. I imagine at night, many of you look up at the stars and dream of traveling to space. Well, this morning's commencement speaker is part of a growing industry that might just be able to make that happen within your lifetime. Granted, his focus now is on launching small satellites into space from a rocket carried under the wing of a modified Boeing 747, but his partner companies are working on human spaceflight travel. Not your average day job, but certainly one that you can aspire to. So who is this speaker? The speaker is Dan Hart, Proud U Albany alum from the class of 1983 and president and CEO of Richard Branson's groundbreaking commercial space firm, Virgin Orbit. Over the course of his storied career, Dan has served in senior leadership roles across a wide range of aerospace programs spanning human spaceflight, satellite development, launch and missile defense, and running through all phases of the aerospace product lifecycle. He has worked with industry giants such as McDonnell Douglas, where he supported the Space Lab program at NASA Kennedy's Space Center, and the Boeing Company, where he spent more than three decades. Like many of you, Dan's entire family is here this morning, his mom, wife, son, and daughter, and even his college roommate to support him, and like you, they will cheer him on as he addresses this amazing crowd. But now, a short video highlighting Dan Hart. Space lab, completely outfitted scientific laboratory, carried into orbit and back in the payload bay of the space shuttle orbit. Solid motor ignition and liftoff. Liftoff of Columbia and the first flight of the European Space Agency Space Lab.
Lift off lift off of Delta 178. Lift off, lift off of the United Launch Alliance Delta 2 rocket. We have lift off, lift off of the United Launch Alliance Delta 4 heavy rocket. He plus 37 seconds. And we have good indication of successful separation of the Tedris M spacecraft. The global positioning system provides worldwide positioning, navigation, and timing services for military and civilian users. The X-37B is a fully automatic space plane. It's officially a billion-dollar program testing reusable unmanned spaceships. Dan's done a bit of everything in the space industry. He's worked with human space flight, he's worked with satellites, he's worked with launch vehicles, and I'm thrilled that now he's leading our team at Virgin Orbit as we will truly open space to everybody. And now... From the, From the class, class of 1983, 1983, Dan Hart. And Dan, take me with you. Albany class of 2018, you are go for liftoff. Like a ship rocketing through space, each of you are about to go off on your own adventure, your own mission of discovery in the vast unknown. I remember sitting where you are, in 1983 during the commencement, sweating from the anticipation or the heat unlike today. Or maybe I was just trying to figure out how to get all my stuff into the car on the way home. Well, whatever it was, I don't think I was as, as prepared as many of you are here today. I had a job, but I didn't know what it meant to do that job. I was traveling far away and I didn't know where I was going to live and I didn't know anybody there. It really was the vast unknown, but somehow, I found my way. And today I want to offer a few ideas, a few thoughts that came to me along the way, a few lessons I learned on my mission in the great vast unknown. But before I do, I want to sincerely thank Provost Steller, President Rodriguez, deans, and members of the faculty for inviting me here today. And to the class of 2018, a hearty congratulations. You've earned our admiration. You rock! Your ideas, your energy, they're limitless. Watch out, world. There's a new group of leaders about to take the reins, and we've been anxiously awaiting for you to arrive. To the mothers and fathers and grandparents, brothers, sisters, friends, relatives, and to, to all the, the distinguished faculty here, I can feel the power of your pride from way up on the stage. It's an incredible honor to be back in Albany after 35 years. Go Great Danes! You know, back then it was a different era, a simpler time. A time when we in our naive innocence, in our pure primitive daily way of life, knew nothing of the complexities of today's society. Back then there were no cell phones, no internet, no Twitter, no Facebook, no GPS, none of it. We communicated simply using a sequence of grunts and whistles. On a Friday night, we would look up and ponder at the stars, usually with a beer and a plate of very, very hot buffalo wings. But soon, we would abandon our hunter-gatherer ways, gather our diplomas, and move off to find a new way of life. And coming out of those days, and all the twists and turns that came along the road these 35 years, there are three lessons that I learned, three lessons that I want to share with you today that I came upon during my evolution to modern times. One, follow your passion. Don't try to figure it all out right now. Just get started. Two, know that as you start, as you move forward, there will be times when you'll wonder if you're in the right place and when you feel self-doubt. Give yourself some time, persevere, and remember, you have the support of these people right here. And three, changes will present themselves your whole life. Be open to new transitions and go for it again and again. For me, I always followed a deep-rooted passion for space. Sometimes it was well-defined, and other times it was rather vague. 
As a kid, I remember staying up late at night and seeing the grainy images of the Apollo moon landings on our black and white TV set. And later in life, I was caught up in science fiction and then science. They gripped me. They caught hold of my imagination. And in the spring of 1981, I watched the very first flight of a space shuttle from my dorm room over on the 12th floor of the Indian Quad Tower. Yeah, I'm sorry I didn't clean the room up that well when I left. But I was gripped by that. I was caught by the space bug as soon as the bird lifted off of the pad. Well, one week after graduating Albany, I was at my first job down at the Kennedy Space Center as an engineer on the space shuttle program. And how did I get there? Well, there's a bit of a story in it. You see, it's a story about the powerful combination of aspirations and pure, pure ignorance. See, in my senior year, one day I was sitting and pondering how I would start my career. I had no idea. I had never had any exposure to aerospace. So on a whim, I picked the phone off the hook and I dialed Information Houston, Texas. Information, calling information was the closest thing we had to Google back then. Well, I got the, the number for NASA Johnson Space Center and I called. And I got referred to another number and I called that number. And I got referred about 12 more times to other numbers until I found someone at NASA headquarters who had an idea to share with me. He sent me a book a book of all the companies that had anything to do with the space shuttle program and all their addresses. So I ran over to my dorm room, typed up a cover letter and a resume on my Smith Corona typewriter, grabbed a bunch of dimes and went over to the library and Xeroxed 120 copies of my resume and sent them out. Probably the way you guys did. Well, you know, I didn't hear anything from anyone for quite a while and I was getting worried. I mean, I expected to at least get rejection letters, but I got next to, next to nothing. Then one day during spring break, the phone rang and my dad picked up and he burst into my room and said, it's Kennedy Space Center, they wanna talk to you. Well, it was a little bit early on a spring break. Uh, it was, I think it was before 11 o'clock. So I sprang out of bed, cleared my voice as best I could, got to the phone and two days later as I was at my interview. Well, at the end of the interview, the branch manager, a guy named Bob, was talking to me and tapping lightly on my resume. And I noticed at the top of my resume, there was this little note. And the note said, I think you'd be interested, signed John Yardley. And Bob turned to me and he said, how long have you known John? You know, he's a legend down here. And I said, um, well, I thought to myself, I, I don't know who John, who John is but I blurted out, uh, not long. <laughs> so we shook hands and I flew home, but I wondered about Bob's comment. I mean, who was John Yardley and how did he get a hold of my resume? Later I realized and learned that I had made a major, major mistake. You see, the book that NASA had sent me had the addresses of only the top senior executives of those companies. My resume had bypassed HR gone directly to the CEO or president's office and then sent directly into the trash. But one of those resumes, one of those 120 resumes, got to the president of McDonnell Douglas Astronautics, John Yardley. And for some reason, Mr. Yardley took a moment to read a resume that came out of the blue on Xerox paper from an enthusiastic but clueless young man added a four-word note and sent it down to his Kennedy Space Center team. And because he did, I was propelled into my first job and a 35-year career so far. So my advice to you is start. Follow your passion and don't try to figure everything out right now. Sometimes not knowing, not knowing all the rules, not following the normal way can be your best strength. It can open doors and start you on your way. The next thing I dealt with, the next thing I dealt with was self-doubt. Because when I got down to Kennedy Space Center, there was a language that they spoke. It was all letters. It was acronym soup. I didn't understand anyone. I didn't speak the language and I didn't have an engineering degree. I felt completely unprepared. I felt useless for weeks and months. 
I was working with people, or for people, who I considered giants, people who had launched Gemini and Apollo. They didn't know what to do with me and my fellow space wannabes. I almost gave up. I called mom, who's sitting right over there with my beautiful wife and daughter and son. Mom told me, yeah, how about that? Thanks, mom. Mom told me I really should stay at least a year. But if I really wanted to come home, she had seen some good jobs advertised in the New York Times at the Singer Sewing Machine Company for technical writers. I wrote to a professor here at Albany who had become an important mentor to me, Dr. James Corbett. He said that he had confidence that I would make it a success. No pressure there. So I buckled down. I worked a seemingly infinite number of 12-hour shifts, totally bored and feeling useless. But eventually, slowly, I started to catch on. And six months later, I was on console at the Launch Control Center for the Space Lab 1 launch. And as soon as I heard liftoff and felt the rumble of those engines, I knew instantly why I was there. Now, had I not stuck with it, had I given up, I'd probably be up here right now telling you about the latest features of your sewing machine and how to stitch really cool hemlines. But instead, I'm glad I listened to Mom. So, thanks, Mom. So the key message is, know that as you start your career, there will be times when you feel self-doubt, when you wonder if you're in the right place. Persevere. Give yourself some time. You know, and call Mom, or maybe even Dad. Or even better, reach out to one of your favorite Albany professors. You may be surprised how getting their support will bolster you and how it'll make you feel. The final suggestion I want to leave you with is this. Change will present itself through your whole life. Be open to them, to new transitions, and go for it again and again. Two years ago, I was a vice president at the Boeing Company building spacecraft where I'd been for 34 years and I wasn't really looking for a change. Out of the blue, I got a phone call. Would I be willing to interview with Richard Branson's Virgin Group for a new role? Well, they asked me to come and start a new company to launch rockets from under the wing of a Boeing 747, something that's never been done before. Richard and I met and he explained his aims and his thinking. He said he sees space as a way to unite the world globally as one community, one environment, and by increasing access to space, we would be changing the world for good. His words resonated a deep chord, a passion that I've held my whole life. So today I'm the CEO of a space startup company called Virgin Orbit. I'm leading a team to build a new launch system, to, to launch a new generation of satellites into orbit. It's difficult, risky work. Rockets are never easy, never a sure thing, but it's incredibly exciting. I have an awesome team. We're charging hard, forging a future, another chapter, another connection with an old passion, a familiar purpose. So know that as you leave here to your next adventure, you'll face completely new and foreign environments. If you feel yourself tossed around like a small boat in a perfect storm, well, Hang on to the reasons that got you there. Have confidence in your abilities. Think about what you've accomplished here. There are incredible opportunities and incredible challenges that await you. They are yours for the taking. Be open to them, welcome them, grab hold of them, and enjoy the ride. You know, in my business, a space mission starts with a couple of people who give birth to an idea. They nurture that idea. They share that idea with a few others, and a concept is born. As the concept grows, others, experts from around the globe, come and share the concept, and it matures and takes shape. With the support of the community, the concept becomes a design. And eventually, the design is tested and proven to determine if it's ready, ready to one day fly into the heavens. And one day, those people, those people who created that idea, that concept, that design gather in one place. And on that special day, there's a certain look that appears in their eyes. There is no mistaking it. 
a look of pride and anticipation, a look of introspection and question. Are we ready? Did we prepare this mission in every way that we could? Is there anything left undone? And on that day, the clock counts forward, and the anticipation builds and builds until T-Zero, when they look to the stars, and with a deafening roar, the voyage begins. Well, class of 2018, this is your time, your mission, your voyage. You've proven that you're ready. You've got a green board. It's time for you to switch to internal power. Engine start. Lift off! Good luck. Thank you so much, Dan, for your inspirational words. You rock. Another round of applause for Dan Hart. Good morning, graduates. My name is Mike Christakis, class of 01 and 05, and I serve as UAlbany's Vice President for Student Affairs. I've had the pleasure of getting to know so many of you over the past few years, and I know this graduating class is a special group of individuals who are committed to UAlbany and its ideals. A perfect example of that commitment is in this year's senior class gift, a way for students and parents to give back to UAlbany. The class gift also serves as a living tribute to great memories, an outstanding education, and a bright future. Selected by UAlbany's Student Philanthropy Council, this year's class gift is in support of UAlbany's Disability Resource Center, which supports students by ensuring a fully accessible living and learning environment during their years here on campus. I am so proud to announce that over 450 students, parents, faculty and staff pledged over $17,000 for the Disability Resource Center. Thank you. I can say with certainty that hundreds of future UAlbany students will benefit from the generosity of our graduates and their families, and for that, we are forever grateful. It is now my distinct privilege to introduce our student speaker, Madiha Khan, known fondly as Maddie. Maddie is graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree with honors in computer science. In recognition of her academic achievements, she has won the Seth Spellman Achievement Award for three consecutive years among many other recognitions. Most recently, she received SUNY's Chancellor's Award for Student Excellence and UAlbany President's Outstanding Senior Award. Though many of you recognize her as the outgoing Vice President of the Student Association or as a Purple and Gold Ambassador, it is because of her academic achievements that she has the opportunity to be your student speaker this morning. Please join me in welcoming Maddie Kahn from the Class of 2018. Good morning, President Rodriguez, Provost Teller, distinguished faculty, staff, families, and my fellow graduates. It is an honor and a blessing to stand here today to have the privilege of sharing my story with you. I will be the first person to say that growing up, I never thought I would be living this moment today. Me, a girl from New Delhi with no public speaking skills, standing on the stage at the commencement ceremony at one of the top SUNY schools in New York State. <laughs> I was 17 when I decided to move halfway across the world to come to you, Albany, not even legal to vote. Yet here I was making these decisions. My first day at U Albany was my first day in this country. I remember that my crab dropped me off right there at Collins Circle, 
and I had my first glimpse at this campus that would be my home for the next four years. At that time, I had no expectations from college beyond getting a degree. I couldn't have been more wrong. Not only did I have to learn calculus and computer science, I also learned how important it is to know the steps to the Macarena song and the cha-cha slide. <laughs> now, I tell people that I am graduating from UAlbany with a Bachelor of Science. I, I use that word without even thinking about it, not realizing how false that is. There's an old proverb that says, it takes a village to raise a child. In my case, it took the unconditional love and support of my mother to get me through college. <laughs> my mother believes in me more than I believe in myself. Like many of you, she is a first-generation college student. <laughs> Her mother, my grandmother, didn't even go to kindergarten. My mother defied all odds. Not only did she go to college, she went on to law school and became the first female in her town to be a lawyer. <laughs> she set the bar so high, I'll need to get a PhD before I can even begin to get to her level. Today, she flew halfway across the world to see me graduate. Thank you, Momsi. So when all of you celebrate your accomplishments today, take a minute to also acknowledge the people who made this possible for you. Your family, your friends, your mentors, and your idols. Never forget that you achieved something many still dream of. Look around you at your peers at the smiles on their faces and the light in their eyes. A lot of you must have questioned if you would ever get to this day. I know I did. But our choices are what led us to this day. We all made the choice to persevere, to learn, to grow, to push ourselves, to pick ourselves up every time we fell, and to finish this crossing line. The tears and the smiles, the failures and the success that we've shared within these walls at UAlbany will always be a part of us. When you go out into the world, always remember where you came from. After graduation, I'm backpacking across Europe with my best friends, Stacy and Luisa. These friends that I've made at UAlbany helped me reach my goals and motivated me to work relentlessly to reach them. I urge all of you to break stereotypes and to challenge yourself. Do the things you've always told yourself that you will. Only when you leave your comfort zone will you have an experience that transforms you. Now is the time. Don't make a wish list. Live it. This is our time. Congratulations to the class of 2018. Now and forever, we are Great Danes. Thank you, Maddie, and congratulations. Now join me in welcoming Brian Fessler, class of 06 and 07, and president of the UAlbany Alumni Association. Brian. Uh, 
I don't know how I can follow that. Great job, Maddie. Well, good morning, class of 2018. As president of your Alumni Association, it is my distinct honor to join you on your very special day. On behalf of over 180,000 alumni of this great institution, it is my pleasure to welcome you into the University at Albany Alumni Association. I've been where you are today, so I know the joy and perhaps even a little of the trepidation you may be feeling as you face the future. Remember this, the Alumni Association is here to help. We've been serving our UAlbany graduates since our creation back in 1849. Whether through our graduates of the last decade or gold, alumni events, regional activities, Great Dane pregame events and viewing parties, including next weekend in Boston for our lacrosse Final Four game, career advisory services, or interacting with our social media accounts, the Alumni Association can help you stay connected with friends and classmates while offering a vast alumni network for career opportunities and much more. Our goal is the same as yours for you to live up to your fullest potential and succeed in all of your endeavors. There are currently UAlbany alumni in all of the 50 states and in 129 countries on six continents. If anyone's moving to Antarctica after this, please let us know. Today you join that remarkable family. Your hard work has paid off and you are now an alumnus of the University at Albany. I could not be prouder to be your Alumni Association president. Congratulations and go Great Danes! It is now my pleasure to welcome graduating senior Savannah Gordon, who will sing our alma mater, which is printed on page 31 of your program. Please rise and join in. of your family, your parents, grandparents, and siblings, as well as members of your extended families and friends. Each of them has helped you reach this significant moment in your life. So now, I invite our graduates to stand again, turn to your families, let them hear how much you appreciate them for all they have done for you.
Please be seated. And now to the centerpiece of our ceremony today. Among our graduates are those who are graduating with academic honors. The names of these graduates are signified by an asterisk in your program, and the graduates themselves are wearing honor medallions. I ask those students who are graduating from our honors college, as well as students graduating cum laude, mag magna cum laude, or summa cum laude, to please rise now and receive our congratulations. Thank you, students. We now move to the recognition part of our bachelor's candidate ceremony who will receive their degrees under a wide range of academic majors. The degree candidates will be introduced by Vice Provost for Undergraduate Education, Jeanette Altariba. Thank you, Provost Steller. And good morning, graduates and guests. It is indeed a great day to be a great dame. We will introduce our degree candidates by school and college. Will the degree candidates with majors in the School of Social Welfare please rise and be recognized? Congratulations. Please be seated. Will the degree candidates with majors in the School of Public Health Please rise and be recognized. Our congratulations. And now will the degree candidates with majors in the Nelson A. Rockefeller College of Public Affairs and Policy, please rise. Congratulations. Will the degree candidates with majors in the College of Nanoscale Science and Engineering please rise? Congratulations. Degree candidates with majors in the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences please rise and be recognized. And now, will the degree candidates with majors in the College of Emergency Preparedness, Homeland Security, and Cybersecurity please rise? Congratulations. Will the degree candidates with majors in the School of Education please rise? Our congratulations. Will the degree candidates with majors in the School of Criminal Justice please rise? Congratulations. And now, will the degree candidates with majors in the School of Business please rise and be recognized? All right, is everybody ready? Will the degree candidates with majors in the College of Arts and Sciences please rise and be recognized? All right, don't sit down, don't sit down. I now ask all candidates for the degrees of Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science to rise for the conferral of the degree. <laughs> President Rodriguez, 
These candidates have completed a program broadly based in the fundamental fields of the arts and sciences, with specialized study in the area appropriate to their individual courses of study. In the name of these faculties, I have the honor and privilege of presenting these candidates to you, that you may confer upon them the degree, Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science as appropriate. Thank you, Dr. Alta Riva. And now, the moment that you have all, your family and friends have been waiting for. And while all undergraduate commencement ceremonies are very important and very special, this one is particularly special for me because this is my first undergraduate commencement ceremony as the 20th president of the University at Albany. So thank you. And now, by the virtue of the authority vested in me, by the regents of the state of New York and the trustees of the State University of New York, I hereby confer upon you the degree of Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science as earned with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereunto. Congratulations, felicidades! Graduates and guests, as we conclude this ceremony, we ask that you remain in your seats until the platform party and faculty have exited the stage. Graduates, we invite you to remain on the entry plaza lawn to reunite with your family members and friends. And for your safety and the safety of others, we ask that uh, we remind you that there is no access to this stage. The heavens rained purple and gold confetti. President Rodriguez, I declare that the 174th commencement of the University at Albany is now concluded. Congratulations to you all. Thank you.